In this video, we develop how the Gibbs energy varies with the conditions. Uh, we have said before that the Gibbs energy is a central thermodynamic variable because it allows you to establish the conditions for spontaneity and equilibrium uh, in any process. Uh, as a matter of fact, almost anything that we're going to do from now until the end of the semester is going to revolve around the Gibbs energy and again, that's just, uh, uh, that implies that the Gibbs energy is really a paramount thermodynamic variable uh, in chemistry. All right, so the question that we're trying to answer uh, in this video is how does the Gibbs energy depend on the conditions? Right, for that, we could do a couple of things. Uh, we actually have seen uh, a little bit how this Gibbs energy depends on the conditions from the thermodynamic, uh, fundamental thermodynamic equation that we derived in a prior video where we saw that uh, the uh, fundamental equation for the Gibbs energy is just this one, right? Uh, uh, volume differential of pressure minus the entropy differential of temperature. And what this suggests is that the Gibbs energy depends on pressure and temperature, all right? I think it's uh, illustrative to go back to see how we derive this, ex this expression so that we can uh, reinforce the knowledge that uh, the pressure and temperature are the natural variables for the Gibbs energy. Right, the way that you, we get up here is simply by starting with the definition of the Gibbs energy, f of t minus the product of temperature and, and entropy. And then we simply take uh, first derivatives, total first derivatives. Right? This means that we're actually trying to see how the Gibbs energy depends on any variable. Right, We're not, we're not gonna be freezing any, uh, any variable we're just interested in seeing how this Gibbs energy depends on uh, every variable. So that's why we take total derivatives. Right? So that would be minus t differential of s minus s differential of t. All right, now we plug in here the definition of the enthalpy, which is going to be simply internal energy plus the pressure of the product volume, uh, plus the product of the pressure volume uh, uh, product. Right, so uh, let's do that as uh, simply differential of PV uh, minus T differential of S minus S differential of T. Okay, but we can uh, expand this or distribute this, uh, this product simply as P differential of V plus V differential of P. All right, uh, so again, here we're seeing that uh, in principle, it looks like the Gibbs energy might depend on volume, might depend on pressure, on entropy, and on temperature, but soon we're going to see that many of those variations actually cancel out. All right, so if we now uh, plug in here the first law for a reversible process, okay, what we get is the following. Heat, reversible, and work reversible and then the rest of the terms. Pressure multiplied by the differential of volume plus volume multiplied with differential of pressure minus TDS minus SDT. All right, and now we're ready to uh, replace these terms by things that are useful, right? So we know from the second law that the thermodynamic definition of entropy is related to the differential of reversible heat. And then here, uh, we're going to be uh, making no effort at extracting work other than expansion, right? So there won't be any electrical work, there won't be any gravitational work or anything like that. These are going to be very simple systems that we will want to understand, such as phase transitions and so forth. And in those systems, there's no way that you can extract uh, electrical energy or magnetic energy, because generally uh, that is not available. All right, so this thing is going to be simply uh, minus P external delta V differential of V, and then uh, because we are in a reversible process, then uh, there's equality of the internal and external pressure, so this is simply the, uh, the pressure of the gas. All right, so here's where the cancellation takes place. Notice that that term disappears with that one, this one disappears with that one, and you only have left over those two. All right, so what that means is that uh, uh, because we have examined the dependence of the Gibbs energy on all possible variables, and we see that only the pressure and temperature survive, what this tells you is that the Gibbs energy, the, those variables are natural variables for the Gibbs energy. Right? So you indeed can write the Gibbs energy as depending only on pressure and temperature. Okay, and that is your fundamental equation that we have right here. All right, so again, this is something that we have done before, 
but it was still useful to uh, recover for clarity. Right, so what they, uh, we can then do is try to see if we can learn a little bit more about this dependence of the Gibbs energy uh, on temperature and pressure. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, work with molar quantities because this will be very useful. So this is now going to be a molar Gibbs energy. That means that this will be a molar volume, the volume of one mole, and this will be the molar entropy. Okay? All right, so uh, now we take this expression and take to total derivatives, all right? So that's going to be as follows. We first choose maybe take derivative with respect to pressure, right? So we will have here differential of P at constant temperature, differential of P, and then uh, with respect to temperature, partial, molar gives energy with respect to temperature, constant pressure, and then differential of T. Right, so we then can find uh, very quickly uh, how this variation of the Gibbs energy with te uh, temperature is, that's just simply going to be the minus molar entropy, and how the Gibbs energy changes with pressure, that is simply going to be uh, the molar volume. Okay, so let's take uh, in this video just uh, that dependence on temperature to start with. All right, so if we examine how the molar Gibbs energy depends with temperature, we just have to evaluate this uh, first derivative, and we have to do it at constant pressure so that things don't become very complicated. What we learn here is that this is simply the minus molar entropy. All right, so what we're going to try to do is understand this uh, sensitivity of the Gibbs energy of temperature by uh, drawing a graph for a pure substance, right? So now uh, let's concentrate on maybe water or CO2 or something simple like that. And we're going to draw how the Gibbs energy, and the molar Gibbs energy, uh, depends with temperature uh, for the three phases of, uh, or the th three main phases of that substance, right? So we're going to take maybe CO2 and uh, take the solid, uh, liquid, and gas, right? So notice that what we'll have here is that uh, the minus molar entropy will be the slope of a molar Gibbs energy versus temperature line, right? That's what this is telling you. Notice that absolute molar entropies are always positive, right? The third law of thermodynamics tell us that, uh, tells us that at zero Kelvin, if the substance is perfectly pure and crystalline, that entropy will be zero. But if you're at any temperature above zero Kelvin, then you'll have a positive, positive entropy, right? So what that means is that uh, this number is always positive. And then what that means is that the slopes of the lines that we're going to draw here will always be negative, right? So they're going to be uh, uh, lines of negative slopes. Now, we also know uh, the following, right? We know that when you have a pure substance like CO2 or water, it's always the case that uh, the molar entropy of the solid is going to be smaller than the molar entropy of the liquid, and that's going to be smaller than the molar entropy of the gas phase, right? So what that means is that we're going to have three different lines, one for its phase, and the slopes of those lines will be different, right? So the slope of, of the line will be the most negative, the slope of the liquid will be intermediate, and the slope of the solid line will be uh, uh, the least negative. All right, so uh, let's see if we can draw that here. Uh, I'm going to use different colors uh, for different phases. The black will be for uh, the solid, and I hope that the camera picks up the change, changes in colors. Right, so I'm going to say that uh, that might be the line for the solid. Okay? And then uh, what happens here is that the slope of this line at each point, right, the uh, first derivative of the molar Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure is going to be the minus molar entropy, for it, but for in this case, that is going to be the molar entropy of the solid. Okay? That's what we're trying to do here. Now let's change colors and do here uh, the line of the liquid. So what happens is that the line of the liquid should have uh, uh, a slightly more negative slope because again the more entropy of a liquid is larger than that of a solid. Liquids are intrinsically more entropic than solids. They're more disordered. All right, so uh, in blue we now write here a line that is the line of the liquid. And here the slope of this line is going to be the minus molar entropy of the liquid phase. And finally, uh, we can draw here the line of the gas 
which is going to be aligned uh, with the most negative slope because the molar energy of the gas is always larger than that of the liquid and the solid. So we can come here and maybe draw a line that is like this, that will be the line of the gas. And uh, this slope, I'm going to write right here, is just the minus molar entropy of the gas phase. Okay, so uh, uh, we're going to see in future work that the crossings of these lines are actually important. Right, but we'll have to wait until we move on to the chapter of uh, phase equilibria to understand what the crossings of those lines are. But for now, uh, we're simply are just getting a first uh, uh, approach to this variation of the molar Gibbs energy and temperature. Okay, and this is what, what should happen. Uh, all right, very good then. So uh, in this video, well, th there's, there's uh, one more thing that I have to tell you here, and that is that we're drawing these lines as straight lines in these graphs. But that is an approximation, right? So if we draw them as straight lines, that means that the slope is constant with temperature, right? That means that the uh, molar entropy of a substance in any phase, solid, liquid, or gas, uh, should be constant with temperature. But we actually know that that is not true. We know that the entropy of any substance changes, uh, increases, when you actually increase the temperature, right? So if you think about a, a, a gas, uh, which is at low temperature, and then you elevate the temperature of that gas, there's actually much more entropy at the higher temperature. And what that means is that, again, the uh, slopes of these lines are actually not constant. Uh, they should become increasingly negative with temperature, but that is a little bit difficult to draw, so that's why we always take the approximation to draw these lines as straight. Okay, But again, in reality, we know that they are not straight. We should see that the uh, slopes become increasingly more negative for each line, as you move towards higher temperatures. Okay, so uh, uh, let's recap what we've done in this video. Uh, we have seen that the molar uh, Gibbs energy depends naturally on two variables, pressure and temperature. And we have examined the, the dependence on temperature. We have seen that uh, that dependence is just the minus molar entropy. And we have begun to take a look at how uh, the molar uh, Gibbs energy changes with temperature for pure substances. And uh, I will write here a couple of things that are that is important in this graph so that we don't forget. Notice that this requires constant pressure. Right, so the examination of how the molar gives energy uh, with temperature requires uh, the study of constant pressure that is easy for us to do. And then this happens for a pure substance. Okay, so uh, this would not apply to uh, mixers or chemical reactions or anything like that. Right, in the next video we're going to look at how uh, the, Gibbs molar, uh, the molar Gibbs energy depends on pressure, which we can see that it's going to be related to the molar volume.